Welcome back to Guillotined 18th Century Chemist Theater. Let's wrap up the basics with a lesson about factor label conversions. This is a pretty simple idea. You just need to be able to correctly convert between different units. If you're not doing an algebra problem in chemistry, you're probably doing a conversion problem between units, and, and most likely you're doing a combination of algebra and unit conversion. And so you really need to master this skill. It's a non-negotiable. You really got to do this correctly. Um, there are certainly uh, people who have made uh, simple conversion mistakes that cost them a lot more than points. Uh, two examples. One of them, the great Kirsten blunder. Uh, legend has it that this poor fellow uh, used the wrong conversion between millimeters and inches and caused a Vigor space probe to miss Venus and hurtle off into space, lost forever. Now, I call that legend has it because I, I can't find any information to verify the existence of this person or the Vigor space probe, but I'm looking into that. But there's no question about what happened to the Mars Climate Orbiter. Uh, this thing was supposed to uh, get measurements on Mars, but then came in at too low of an altitude and disintegrated. And it turns out this was because uh, they converted, uh, they, put, they had the wrong data in the software. Um, instead of keeping it all SI, they had pound seconds in there, and that caused it to come in at the wrong altitude. And so these can be pretty costly mistakes for anybody. Um, for you, obviously points, but... Um, but interesting enough that, I, that apparently might be the only picture that got taken by the Mars Climate Orbiter. And so if you uh, total up the costs, that's about a $6 million photo. So hats off. <laughs> so we can call this the, the factor label method. Um, you, you probably lack the ability to do this in your head. And even if you do, you should show work. Um, you're, you're not the conversion quota. Uh, the factor label provides a consistent method for solving these problems every time, no matter what you're looking for. And so become very strong with this technique because you will use it all the time in science. Some people call this dimensional analysis, and, and, and obviously some people are going to set it up to look a little differently than what I have here, but it's all the same thing. I have five basic steps, but different people are going to break it up into different steps. And we'll go through each of these steps uh, in detail and then go through an example. Step six is not that conversion quota. So with any math problem or science problem, you want to write out what you're given and what you're looking for. And then the fun comes from trying to figure out what the conversions are. And conversions are equivalent statements uh, where both the top and the bottom are equivalent, meaning the same thing. Um, and these conversions can be flipped either way, depending on what you're looking for and what you're given. Now, what I like to do when I'm setting up conversion statements is ask myself the simple question, which of these two things is bigger and how many little things go into the bigger thing? You can certainly set about the other way, but I find it's much harder to check your work using common sense if you flip it the other way. For instance, I think it's pretty easy to say one inch is 2.54 centimeters and then write the conversion either way, or the fact that one foot is 12 inches and then write that conversion either way. Could you, could you figure out how many feet are in an inch? Yes. Are you more likely to make mistakes that way? Probably. Oh, conversion koala. And so the, the most important part about factor label is making sure that your units cancel out. Uh, the top unit is usually canceled out by the next bottom unit. Uh, the analogy is think about any, any typical horror film. Uh, if a character is going to get killed off, they usually go down to the basement. And then they get they get uh, executed, decapitated, whatever, and uh, and then another character appears to continue the story. And sometimes they make it to the end, and sometimes they don't. So always be careful of being get sent to the basement, whether you are a uh, person in a horror film or a unit in a factor label conversion. And so we'll, we'll keep an eye on on making sure that correct unit goes through. Now you can certainly have stacked units like uh, meters per second, where both of those come through. And you can have squared or cubed units, and there's plenty of information out there about handling units correctly. Once your units work out, uh, then the numbers are going to work out. Again, if the units don't get through, then don't send in the numbers because they're not going to get through either. So consider units, uh, if I can keep switching analogies, sort of like the Marines of the problem. Again, if they don't get through, don't bother trying to do the math. Uh, you can plug it in your calculator, just simply multiplying the things on top, dividing the things on the bottom. Multiplication and division sig fig rules apply, so usually it's a weak link situation. 
Remember that definitions will not convert. So the fact that 12 inches equals one foot, uh, those numbers will not limit you. Now again, some people might disagree with me, but I say if your conversion required a measurement, then uh, it's gonna limit significance. So in my opinion, uh, one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Um, that's a perfect inch, but a imperfect measurement, uh, 2.54 centimeters. So in my opinion, that limits you to three sig figs. Other people might say different things. Uh, I, I wouldn't get into a bar fight over it. And then check your answer. Just use common sense. Should it have gotten bigger or smaller? So. We'll find out, Koala. We'll find out. So let's go through a simple example here. Uh, let's say that you have 49 60 watt light bulbs. How many megawatts does that equal? Now you should be learning your prefixes, uh, and those are easily found on any website. And so you know that you start with 79 light bulbs and you're looking for how many megawatts. Now don't start with 60 watts. Mathematically you could, but you don't want to start with something that's going to end up being a conversion. And so I know that, again, looking at units alone, I can go from bulbs to watts and then watts to megawatts. Now notice I didn't put down any numbers yet. Make sure the units work through. And then the first conversion is 60 watts equals one bulb. And then the second conversion is one megawatt is bigger, and that's there's a million watts in a megawatt. And then you're ready to go through and do the math. So you end up with 0 0.00474 megawatts. Now the koala does have a point here. Um, you need to watch your sig figs. Now, this, this is sort of a unique problem, but it's worth having a fun discussion over. Um, remember, definitions aren't going to affect significance. Uh, 79 light bulbs at the beginning was a counted number, so that's not going to affect significance. The only number that might affect significance is this number. Now, I'm assuming that when someone measures uh, a 60 watt light bulb, they, they aren't assuming that it's exactly 60 watts. It's not defined as such, so it needed to be uh, measured, then there's an average. And how, how precise that uh, average is, I don't know. But if the size of the container writes 60 watts, then I'm going to assume that it only has one sig fig. But you could probably get away with saying that has two sig figs or just ignoring it completely and keeping three. Um, usually it's a little bit more clear cut whether something was measured against the scale or not. But if we were to limit that to one sig fig, then that becomes 0 0.005 because we keep the four and the seven rounds up. And so that, that wraps up factor label. Again, an extremely important skill, uh, not that hard to master. And so even if your format might look a little different, the knowledge is still the same. So I really do appreciate you paying attention and watching the video, and I hope that you have a great day.